Hi everyone, Jessica here and welcome back. So for today's video we're going to be taking a look at a new toy that I've just purchased and this is the We Are Memory Keepers 123 Punch Board. So let's dive straight in and take a look at the product itself. So here you can see it's got a flap that opens up and it has got instructions to be able to make the envelope, the bow and the box. So this is a three in one product. So here in the envelope section, you can see that you have got your instructions. It's also got the dimensions that you need to know. So depending on what envelope size you're making, it tells you what size of paper you need to start off with. And then it gives you an extra measurement to be able to start creating your envelope on the board itself. So the measurement on the board you can see up here. So this is the punch guide and it goes up in inch increments and it tells you exactly where you need to place your paper. Exactly the same for the bow. So it's got the bow size, the width of the paper, the three lengths of the paper because you need three separate pieces for the bow and then the punch guide as well. And again, the same with the box, box dimension, the size of the box and then what lines you're going to line your paper up with. So looking at the actual board itself, you've got the punch guide, you've got lots of different score lines, you've got the box start line. So there's lots of measurements and lots of labels on here that does relate back to the instructions and the grid that we've just looked at. It's also got this really long extended arm. So if you're making, say, a 4x4x4 four by four by four box, you will need to then have a 12x12 12 12 piece of paper. So that's what the arm is for. These top two sections has also got a punch in it, so it allows you to round the corners and cut a slit in for the box. So just turning the product over, you can see those punches behind. This also comes included with a score tool, and this is just housed in the back of your product, and you can get to it just to the side, and you can pull it out very easily. The measurements that are actually printed on the product itself are actually in inches. But what this also includes is a sticker for exactly the same instructions or the same measurements, but the measurements are in centimetres. So it doesn't matter whether you use centimetres or inches, you'll be able to work out exactly the sizes you need. You also get an instruction booklet and it includes a few other things that you can make using this scoreboard. So you can see it starts with the envelope and it gives you picture instructions on how to create your envelope with a brief description of what you need to do. So even though you have written instructions on the product itself, having a visual image might just help you if you are struggling slightly. So you can make your normal envelopes or you can make box envelopes. There's a few different sizes of bows that you can create. And again, it gives you all of the instructions that you need. You can also create a variety of sized boxes and that comes together by using that slit punch. You can also make envelope liners, you can make string boxes, you can make coin envelopes, and you can make a file folder cards. So there's lots of, of extra ideas within that booklet um, of how you can use your punch board. So the first thing we're going to look at creating is going to be an envelope. So what I've done is I've picked three different kinds of papers. So I've got a 12 by 12 sheet of paper, an 8 by 8, and I've also got a 6 by 6 piece as well. So I'm going to create three different sized envelopes just so you can see how easy this is to use and sort of give a little bit of variety in the sizes. So the first envelope size we're going to create is a 3 by 3 inch square envelope. So I started with my 6x6 six six inch paper and the instructions have told me to cut the paper size down to 5.5 inches square. Then it's telling me that the punch guide I need to start at is 2 and 3 quarters. So what I really love about this is it's not only telling you the sort of um, inch increments, but it's also telling you what that size is in between as well. So the first thing that you need to do is punch that down and that's going to cut the corner out. Then I'm going to use the envelope score line A and I'm going to go right up inside the punch and I'm going to score all the way down. Then I'm going to rotate my cardstock 90 degrees and I'm going to match up my score line with that first notch on the left hand side. So on our blue punch 
that first notch that you can see. Then we're going to repeat the same process. So we're going to score a line envelope, score line A, and we're going to punch down to cut out that corner. And this, you're just going to uh, repeat the process until you've done all the corners. So match up your previous score line with that first notch and punch down again. So once you've got the hang of this, it's incredibly easy to do. The only thing, because I'm not particularly used to using scoreboards or scoring, is making sure that you stay within that valley of the score line and not sort of come out to mark your cardstock. So once you've done that process all the way around, you can start folding your envelope and putting everything together. So the one thing I would say about using patterns paper that is in a particular direction is once you have finished creating your envelope, you'll notice that your pattern will be on a diagonal. The way to get around this would be to cut your cardstock in such a way that means that the pattern would still be facing down. So you'd have to rotate your paper, cut it at a different angle, and that should solve that problem. So once you've burnished all the sides to get a really crisp fold, then that's our envelope essentially put together. The last thing you need to do is just to tape it together. So one of the additional things that you can do is round the corners, or obviously you can leave them as they are. So to round the corners, all you need to do is slot your corner into that left hand top punch and just punch back the punch die. So I'm doing this on all four corners and it just gives it all a very finished look. The other thing to remember when you are assembling your envelope is if you're making an envelope in a size like 6x4 or 7x5, you want to make sure that you are picking the right sides to be your side of your envelope. So, for example, if you're making a 7x5, you want to make sure that you are using the 5 inch sides as the side of your envelope otherwise it's and it's going to end up being a bit of a funny shape all i'm using here is some red liner tape so if you are thinking about creating envelopes putting them in the post you want your envelopes to stay together so using a super strong adhesive really is the best way to go and i do find that the red liner tape is the best for the job so we've put that envelope together super quick and I think once you start doing it, I think you get used to it pretty quick. So let's go on to making our second envelope. As the process for creating any envelope, no matter what size it is, is exactly the same. I'm just going to speed through this, but I will tell you the size of paper and the size envelope that is going to create. So I'm going to create a four and a half by five inch card. So to me, that's a bit of an odd size, but I picked it because you needed an eight inch square sheet. And that is what I've got here. So this is an eight by eight um, piece of paper. And to get started, I need to align my cardstock up with the three and seven eighth inch mark along that punch guide. So exactly like we did before, that is the only difference is where you start on that punch guide. Once you've lined up, you punch down exactly the same, you score along the envelope score line, and then you rotate 90 degrees and match your score line up with that first notch. I have again rounded the corner for this envelope because I just think it looks a lot nicer. And again, I'm just gonna go and burnish all of those score lines using the score tool. And that is going to bring the envelope together really nicely. So you still want to be careful at this point to make sure that you are burnishing those lines on those fold lines that you have made. Again, I'm going to be using that red liner tape. So you will notice that I put the red liner tape on these sides and just along the bottom here. Because if you put them on the bottom flap, it could be that you end up sort of put an adhesive where you don't want it right at the top and it's going to stick to the inside of your envelope or possibly stick to the inside of your card. So by putting the adhesive on those side flaps, you've got no worries about there being any exposed adhesive. So for the last envelope, I'm gonna create the biggest envelope that I can. And this is using um, a 12 by 12 sheet of paper. And I'm gonna be making a seven by seven inch envelope. So like I said, that's the biggest envelope size that you can create. 
So I've cut my cardstock down to 11 and a quarter inches square. And because the cardstock is so big, you can see that I've extended that arm out and that's going to give me a longer score line A so I can make sure that I score the whole thing. Again, process exactly the same and I'm still then just rounding the corners at the end to finish our envelope. So the main reason that I purchased this 123 scoreboard is because I wanted to start creating my own envelopes. I really love the idea of creating a card and having a matching envelope. So if you buy things like card kits where you get um, sort of papers with a stamp, so everything sort of matches together perfectly, I love the idea of creating a card and envelope that matches in some way. So with some of the smaller sized uh, envelopes, the, the cardstock you use will need to be cut down. So with those offcuts, you can use those on your card and you're going to have whatever colour or pattern is on your envelope is going to be on your card and it's going to match perfectly. So I really, really love that idea. I decided to go with the 123 punch board instead of just the envelope punch board because I figured at some point maybe I want to make I might want to make bows or boxes and I thought for not a lot more to have that option of being able to create those two additional um, items I thought it was worthwhile. So as you can see we've finished now our big envelope so we have got a seven by seven inch envelope a four and a half by five inch envelope and a three by three inch envelope and think you can make so many sizes in between so once you've created one envelope they it all works exactly the same so you can make one you can make all of them and it was incredibly easy to do so the next thing we're going to create is an extra small bow. So you can see there are three pieces here. So the instructions advise that you need to have your paper width at one inch. Then you need to have three paper lengths, one at six inch, one at three and a half and one at a quarter. So after you've got all of your pieces together, you need to take your first longest piece and you need to put that into the center of the punch. So to find out where you need to align your paper along the punch guide, you need to follow punch A. And that's at three inch for the extra small size. And you can see it's punched out the center of this first section. And this is gonna create our sort of loops of the bow. As we need to make sure that we've got this on both sides, it does say to flip your paper over or you could just rotate it 180 degrees. The next thing we need to do is punch out the corners. So all you need to do is line this up with the bow guide line and it will punch those corners for you. Unfortunately, with this particular paper that I use, um, it really didn't want to be punched out and I ended up taking my scissors and just cutting this by hand or following uh, the marks that had been made on the paper. So this was a quite cheap paper. Um, it was just a paper pack that I got from a pain shop. Um, so it really isn't the best quality. It did kind of fray when I cut it as well. Um, but I really liked the pattern of the paper. That's why I used it. So like I said, I just going to cut this uh, the corners with my scissors but when I created the next bow so when I make the extra large bow I use better quality paper and I didn't get that issue so here you can see what it's going to look like and like I said this is going to be the loop section of our bow now we're going to take our B length piece and we need to cut the notches out exactly the same as what we did on the last piece so this particular piece is three and a half inches long and punch B guide is telling us to align our paper up at uh, one and three quarter inch and do the same process of taking that sort of, uh, notch out of the middle for both sides and this is going to be the bottom piece of our bow so the next thing we're going to do is insert this piece into the punch section so Actually, on the punch itself, it does say center marks, and there are a couple of um, indented lines that you are able to line this up. So whilst you can't see that on camera, if you do have the product, you will be able to see that. And as you can see, it's taken out the uh, that section of the end to give us that nice bow finish. 
So the next thing we need to do is just assemble. So we're finished with all of these scoring and punch them. So we need to put some adhesive on the ends. So what I didn't realize until I'd already put my adhesive down is you want to put your adhesive on the inside. So where I'm using a single sided piece of paper here, I needed to put my adhesive on the inside, so on that white side, not on the outside. So all, I, all I'm going to do just for this is just put some adhesive on the inside and just carry on as normal. So it does end up being sticky, but I'm not too worried about that. So once you put your adhesive in, you're just going to match up sort of the markings. You've got to fold it in on, on itself and it's just going to sit right there in the centre. The next thing we need to do is adhere this really tiny piece. This is going to be the centre. It's going to hold everything together and it's just going to neaten up our bow nicely. So we're just going to put this on with some adhesive and just wrap it around that very centre piece of the bow. So you can see just how this is coming together. So you could leave it like that if you wanted to, but obviously this now has this extra piece, which will just kind of give it a little bit more detail. Put some adhesive right in that centre and push that centre piece down. So you can see our finished bow here and it's really nice and three dimensional and now haven't actually made one. So when I first did it, it, it did seem a little bit complicated. We are going to make another one. Hopefully it's making sense to the, the, the way I'm describing it to you. But actually, I'm really glad we got the one, two, three punch board because I do actually really, really love these bows. So like I said, we're going to create a second bow, and this is the extra, extra large bow now. So I'm going to show you the smallest and the largest. So again, you need to have three paper lengths. So it's telling us that the paper width needs to be one and a half inch. Then the lengths we need to have at 10 inch, five and a quarter, and three eighths of an inch. So again, we're going to take our um, piece A, which is the 10 inch, and we're going to line that up with the five inch mark so that is on the punch a guide we are putting that at five inch and we're doing that for both sides then so like you can see here that is punched out really really well on this because it's better cardstock so i'm just uh, lining the ends up with that bow guide and just punching out those edges and that's piece A finished. So you can see just how much um, quicker we're able to go through this. Having done it once, you kind of get an idea of what you need to do. Now we're going to do piece B. So this needs to be lined up with two and uh, two inch and five eighths. We're going to do the center pieces and then we are going to punch out the ends as well. And that is then piece B all finished. So once again, finished with the scoreboard, we can just assemble our bow. So like I said, you can really see just how quick this comes together. When you know what you're doing, when you've made a couple, you can really sort of make these super, super quickly. So again, I'm putting my adhesive on the wrong side of the cardstock. And I'm just going to fold that in on itself. And that is going to create the loop section of our bow. With the loop section done, we can then stick down our center piece. Um, so this piece is three eighths of an inch. So again, it only needs to be wide enough to be able to get in that very center gap. We're just gonna put it down with some adhesive and just wrap those corners around it. So it didn't wrap um, sort of as far around, so you could make it a little bit bigger if you, uh, depends on what you're going to put it on if you needed to, but obviously there is enough for it to, to go around. And you can see there, I'm just kind of making the, um, the loops just a little bit more 3D, just to kind of stand up a little bit more before I adhere it down onto uh, essentially the, the back piece or um, piece B. And then that is our bow all finished. So I really love the dimension that this gives it. I mean, this would be perfect on a box, um, on a present, actually on a card itself. So don't forget, you can put this on the cards and use it um, as an additional element. So you can see here, the sizes between the extra small and the extra, extra large. Um, so, you know, you, it's very versatile. You could use this for so many different things. The last thing we're going to put together is a box and I'm going to be creating the four by four by four inch box, which requires a 12 by 12 inch sheet of paper. 
So the first line that we need to line our paper up against is this box start line. And because we're making an extra large box, the guide is telling us to use the extra large line. And we're going to punch out exactly the way we did when we created our envelopes. But this time we're going to be scoring three lines instead of just that one for the envelope. So we're going to be scoring along box score line A. You also need to extend your arm, so I'm just doing that here. And then you need to score along box score line B, which is the same line as the envelope, envelope score line A. So that's the same one. But then the third score line you need to score along is box score line C. And again, because we are creating that extra large, the guide is telling us to score on the extra large or the XL line. So I'm going to score this line and I'm going to go as far down as the score line we have created. And that is as far as that score line will go anyway, so you won't be able to go any further. Once you have used the punch and scored all three lines, we need to rotate the cardstock 90 degrees anti-clockwise and then repeat the process. So we firstly need to line up the edge of our cardstock with box start line. And again, this is the XL line that we need to be following. We're going to punch out that notch again. We are going to score along box score line A, box score line B. And then we're going to score again at the XL score line for score line C. So once you've done this for all four sides of your sheet of paper, we can then move on to the next step. So that next step is to take some additional notches out of your cardstock so it will fold up perfectly. So you need to flip your cardstock over and we need to punch out the section that has got two lines overlapped. And to make sure you get this in the right spot, you need to line the edge of your cardstock up with whatever line you've used for the box start line. So we've been using the XL line, so therefore we're going to line up with that same line again. And that is going to take out the notches in the perfect place. So again, go around all four sides and complete this. So each side of your cardstock should have two notches out of it. There's only one last thing that we need to use the scoreboard for, and that is to use the corner slitter punch, which is here on the right hand side. And this is going to create our mechanism for securing our box together. So on all four of the flaps, you need to punch this slit into them because you will be using all four corners to assemble your box and keep it together. So once you've done that, we don't need to use the scoreboard anymore. We will be then burnishing our score lines and putting our box together. So the first lines we need to burnish are the ones that run from one side of the cardstock to the other. So as you are looking at the uh, piece of paper now, you can see the lines that I'm indicating. These are the ones that you need to burnish. And this is then going to create the structure of the box itself. Once you've finished burnishing all of these score lines, you need to then move on to the actual flaps. So these are the sections where we have punched out that slit. So again, just go around and burnish those. I'm then just going to go around and take these other sections. This is what's going to allow your box to open and close um, and sort of give your box a little bit more stability. So I'm just going around and burnishing those corners as well. And here you can see how this box is going to come together. So I'm taking two opposite sides and just using those slits and just putting them into each other. Once again, if you take the other two sides and do the same, that is going to create your box. I have to say I am actually incredibly surprised at how good this box looks. It's, it is sturdy. If you were to put things in it, um, if you were to decorate the inside of it with more card cardstock, then of course it would make the whole box sturdier again because you, are, you, you have got sort of thicker um, sides to the box. Um, 
I have got a couple of ideas actually already of what I think I might use this type of box for. So again, I was only looking to get um, an envelope maker, but by getting this um, one, two, three punch board, I can create all three of these items and I can mix them together if I want. So you can see that you could add this extra, extra large bow that we created on top of this box and it makes the perfect present, whether you wanted to put something inside it or if it was purely decorative. So I'm actually really glad that I decided to go for this uh, punch board instead of the envelope scoreboard, uh, envelope punch board, because I can now make so much more. So I'm just going to bring in the other items that we have made in this video. So of course we have got our box we've just made. And that is the biggest box that we can create. We've also created the extra small bow and the extra, extra large bow. And we've created three different sized envelopes. So that's it for this video. I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope I've shown you sort of um, how to use the product practice if you already have it and you're not 100% sure. Or maybe it's something that you are looking at or considering purchasing. And hopefully I've just sort of shown you a couple of things that you can make with it. Um, and that might just help you make your decision. If you did like this video, please give it a thumbs up and leave a comment down below. I do really hope that it made sense as well. I hope I didn't sort of confuse matters at all. If you've got any questions or anything, like I said, leave me a comment down below and I can help. If you haven't subscribed to my channel already, then please do so so you don't miss out on any future videos. Thanks for watching and happy crafting.